الرحمن الرحيم وعلم آدم الأسماء كلها ثم أردهم على الملائكة فقال أنبئوني بأسماء هؤلاء إن كنتم صادقين صدق الله المولانا العلي 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 العظيم Respected organizers of this event Respected sons and daughters, brothers and sisters in Islam Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh It is indeed a great pleasure to be here in your company in the company of you learned youth who are still in the process of learning and I think this learning process never comes to a halt because it is the climax of knowledge of a person when he says in the words of Saadi Shirazi he was a great classical Persian poet and he says Malumam should ki heech malumam na should. I know this much that I know nothing. And when you say that I know each and everything, then you are yourself closing the doors of your inquisitiveness. You are yourself closing the doors of your further progress in learning. So it's always good to ask for divine mercy as regards your knowledge and the verse by saying Kul Rabbi Zidni Ilma Oh my Allah always increase my knowledge and you know when you have this knowledge still Prophet Wasallam told us that even this knowledge seeking seekers of knowledge can be classified into two categories and he said in one of his prayers, he said, Allahumma inna nas'aluka ilman nafi'a. Oh my Allah, I seek from you that very knowledge which gives me nafa, which gives me good fortune. And in the same breath, he again said, Allahumma inni a'uzu bika min al ilmi la yanfa. Oh my Allah, I seek refuge from you. I seek refuge in you from the knowledge which doesn't give me any nafa, which doesn't give me any profit. So basically in prophetic scheme of things there are two formats of knowledge. One is ilmi nafi, the knowledge which gives you profit, P-R-O-F-I-T, which gives you profit. And another kind of knowledge it is unprofitable knowledge. It doesn't lead you anywhere, rather it leads you astray. Now you can ask me, is there any format of knowledge which, which just uh, deviates us from our path? Is there any format of knowledge which is non which, which doesn't profit us, which doesn't benefit us anyways? Yes. Any kind of knowledge, even if it is the knowledge of Quran. Even if you are seeking divine knowledge, but if your intentions are not correct in seeking this very divine knowledge, it doesn't give you any profit. So that way intention, your intention is better than your action. Because your intentions will guide your actions, whether these are profitable or non-profitable. So that's why Prophet in one of his traditions, in one of his hadiths, he said, Niyatul Mumin Khairum Min Amalih. The intention of a believer is much more superior than his action. And somewhere else he says, Innamal Amalu Bin Niyat. Your actions are governed and guided by your intentions. And everybody will get whatever he, is, he nurtures the intention in his heart, you will get that very thing. And I am talking to you, aspirants for different positions, aspirants for getting a social recognition and position. But when you are only studying for the sake of cracking these exams, by the way of getting through the cutthroat competitions, 
and you have no another intention but just to seek ranks okay you may get it but your study will never be a worship sometimes even you are studying biology can be a worship sometimes even you are studying physics can be worship so it's all it's guided by your intentions and he said in wa inna ma li amri wa ma nawa everybody will get that very thing whatever he not whatever the intention he nurtures in his heart faman kanat hijratuhu ila allah wa rasulihi fa hijratuhu ila allah wa rasulihi whosoever makes a sojourn whosoever makes a journey from his home to somewhere else for the sake of allah and his prophet so his journey is meant for allah and his prophet Woman, or is ke baad kaha hai? And then he says, "One whoever makes his journey, ila dunya yusiba ha, or imratun yatazawa joha, fa hijratu ila maqa na hajra ila. Now whosoever makes his journey or whosoever travels just for the sake of worldly gains, or for the sake of see the world, or imratun yatazawa joha, or for the sake of seeking a woman." Or for that matter, a woman seeking a man, and your journey is only for that very thing, for that tazweej, to get through your marriage proposal later on. Your journey will be like for that. And this very hadith provides the requisite context to many of our coaching class goers. Many of our reading room goers, visitors, who have no other purpose of visiting these. Though, though, I'm sorry to say this, but let me. This is our. This is our social predicament. They only go there. Majority of people they go to coaching centers just for for the sake of what? And I may be pardoned I, if I am using some unparliamentary language, but let's clear. They are majority of we have seen. I, I myself said for the sake of flirting. That is why they only go for this flirting and all their whims and wishes and their exams and their, their ranks. They go to wins because they are not able to set their goals. So it is always your intention. You should do it. Bismillah. Yath taki pert toy, yath khatas pert toy. Bismillah kiru. Allah Taala ji utoi di. It is always your priority. Whatever you prioritize, you will get it. So when you are coming here, dear sons and daughters, I don't know whether I am that much old that I will be addressing you as my sons and daughters. Little younger brothers and sisters are like sons and daughters. So when you come here, you must always have a burning desire in your heart to do something. But you are coming here to become a worship. When you just intend that I am here, I am spending my time here, and let me get some benefits and rewards out of my time. That if I become something, that if I get a responsible seat or chair anywhere, I will serve the humanity at large. Then your study for cracking any examination too is a worship for you, because your intention, your action is always guided by your intention, and divine rewards are always, always in lieu of your intentions. So that way, I always, whenever I address my own brothers. I always say to them that even if a believer goes to a latrine, toilet, washroom, it's a compulsion to go there. Everybody is compulsion to go there. But if you even visit, if you even go to a washroom, a lavatory, and your intention is that I want to purify myself for the sake of Allah, even a Muslim is going to a lavatory and washroom is worship. Because we are not just like secular West, that godless materialism, who say that give unto God what's God's and give unto Caesar what's Caesar's. We don't have a dichotomy between religion and world. 
whatever is spiritual for us it is temporal and whatever is temporal for us you have to spiritualize it that way you have to spiritualize your material also your world it is the orchard for your hereafter even if a shopkeeper down there he is sitting on his shop in his shop if he is weighing something by the balance and if he is keeping the scale correct Quran says let the hell be for those who weigh incorrectly who don't maintain the balance of the scale for them there is help there is a punishment of hellfire by the necessary quality it means that whoever weighs perfectly he is doing worship even the shopkeeper is doing a worship if he is selling goods but his scale is correct so for us worship is not only in mosque for us worship is not only in our religious institutions for us worship is even in the marketplace if you walk on the roadside i will just give you a concept of the prophetic concept of worship or prophetic concept of charity for example let us take this thing charity too is a form of worship prophet says and by the way we just consider worship to be formal acts of prostrating or bowing down or fasting in the ramzan and prophet said worship is not only an act worship is a trait worship is a characteristic phenomenon of your personality he says even if you smile at your frowning brother it is as if you are giving him something in charity that boy is he is smiling at me he is giving me something in charity because my heart is ha happy that he is smiling at me he is recognizing my words he is giving something in charity so it is not necessary that who is a taker of the charity that he must be a pauper and poor and it is not even necessary that who gives he must be a tata birla he can give and i can receive only a smile and this is worship So this professional mullahism, it has taken the real content of religion away from us. And we only measure this uh, uh, religion in terms of the things all trash or good, uh, uh, whatever it may be. Whatever comes from the pulpit and we have to take it just like a one-way traffic and we see whatever they give us and this is worship for us. No, worship is your own trait your own psychological and spiritual trait he said that if you just pass a smile at your frowning brother it is as if you are giving something in charity then he said if you just pour water from your glass from your utensil in somebody else's utensil because he needs it prophet said that you are giving him something in charity as simple as it is you don't need to study majmu or fatawa for being a pious muslim it's all ingrained in your psyche allah has embedded and ingrained virtue as well as vice in your own psychological makeup that's why prophet again said stuck till a kalbik ask fatwa from your heart and it will never lie you if you are sincere and then he said wa irshaduka li akhika fi arzi zulali laka sadaka if you just guide a misled person who has to reach a destination for example this route even goes to Shrari Sharif I am not knowing the way if a sister or if a brother let's not be male chauvinists sisters are also here sitting 
is all the the vices of the mullayat culture professional mullayism that they have divided this they have created a class conflict between male and female genders although sisters we don't believe in feminism but islam always believes in women empowerment basically these are two different things feminism feminism is something different but women empowerment is something different and islam always stands for the empowerment of those who are always marginalized and if you if sister shows me way towards chirar sharif till the time i reach my destination you are giving and giving me something in charity because i have been led to the way i have been led to my destination because of your pointing finger towards the right or a right course right track right path so charity is as simple as it can be so it's always what i was talking now i think i will just reach far away somewhere else coming back i was saying that your actions will always be guided by your intentions and your intentions will just make your actions so they will be counted before allah almighty and here too when you are sitting here by my last parting words when you are sitting here even if you are trying for ias if you are trying for civil services if you are trying for neat if you are trying for engineering exams but just promise before man and god before allah at least in your seclusion in your tanhaiyo mein just promise before in front of allah that if i get something i will show humanity i will at least when i am sitting on a bureaucratic chair afsar chus bu tel yel bu mood thau yel bu dakas gen khad bel soar lad bu rob kar tel chus bu afsar and you promise before allah if i am sitting on a responsible chair i will greet each and every client with a smile then if you crack your exam your trust for cracking it is a worship and if you are sitting on your chair it is a worship and god forbid allah forbid if you are not able to crack it still you will be rewarded for your intention that if ever you would have been an ias officer now you are not you have not cracked it but if you would have ever been an ias officer you would you had just promised that i will greet people you smile you will get to that that very sabab in your norma amal even if you were not on the chair it's all your intention so that's what i was saying if you just study quran you study hadith but you don't have an intention of studying it just like a mission you are only studying quran you are only studying arabic you are only studying hadith for becoming a professional mullah like me but alhamdulillah i have just I came out of this professional sense of life. And it must religion must always be a mission for us. A religion must never be a matter of bread and butter for the people. When it is a matter of bread and butter, when pulpit becomes a matter of bread and butter for we people, we always just indulge ourselves in sectarian diatribes. You calling me kafir? I calling you kafir? Why? Because if it is your matter of bread and butter, it is my matter of bread and butter. Let you guys rose in, go you guys rose in, was win. So you must, you must come out of these things. So if you are just studying even religion for these sectarian, sectarian issues, for being caught in the labyrinths of these scholastic dickerings. Then Allah says, "Masalu lazin hamil tawrat sunna lam yahmiluha kama salil himar." Those who are studying Torah, Torah too was a revealed divine book. Why? 
means those who are studying religious books but even after studying those religious books they are not able to himal carry and shoulder the responsibility of the, those divine revelations allah says they are donkeys they are just like mules ponies and donkeys with religious books laden on their shoulders but they don't know how to shoulder the responsibility they only study religious books just for the sake of creating a wedge and divide among the communities and even if anybody tries to unite ummah even if anybody tries to divide to unite the divided communities he will be branded as he will be labeled as this that that I do not know people I I too am always labeled and marginalized for this thing yeah, it's an old adage give dog a bad name and kill it agar hoon marun aise main kis ko marun dabi chu pagal bichu halkai naav de thos to marun sahal gas ko marun it's always the people give people give names just to create barriers between the message of a person and the general populace so you have to come out of those sectarian dry tribes also but if you study religion only for this thing and only to take your peace after juma prayers then even if you are studying quran even if you are reciting quran you are doing nothing you are doing business and it should be written in your business affairs not in your religious affairs and on the contrary and on the contrary even if you are studying physics but with the intention of deciphering the divine creative genius by the laws of physics you just decipher the uniformity of divine laws everywhere you will come to the conclusion that there is a creative mind behind these these laws who makes them uniform everywhere and that means that this physics too is a wasila the physics too is a ladder for you towards reaching the divine marifai losses yes so for us there is nothing worldly as well as other worldly even physics and chemistry can be other worldly and divine if you just study the atomic model of rutherford if you study the atomic model of niels bohr maybe there are incongruities in those models but still we see that even in an atom there's a nizam what you get in the outer solar system you get inside the atom so everything uniform right from atom to the entire cosmos who made it uniform where from came this uniformity yes chemistry to help us you that there must be something who keeps it uniform you know uniformity is never come by conjecture and guesswork just like some atheists want us to believe they want us to believe that this universe evolved itself out of nowhere a bolt out of the blue they say it like this then we ask them how come this order how come this perfection everything settled at its proper place how come they said well, it was just a big bang ek dhamaka ho gaya blast happened and sun came out moon came out this came out that came out i just asked them one simple question i asked them that if we just suggest a monkey to sit on a chair and then we keep a laptop or computer before a monkey and then we ask a monkey or an ape just to click the buttons of the keyboard do you expect that from this haphazard clicking of the keyboard will shakespeare's sonnet come on the screen will the ghazal of mirza ghalib come on screen why because you said that out of randomness and out of this titter bitter nothing orderly comes out so how come do you want me to believe you that a blast happened and things came into order blast always creates randomness blast does not create order 
don't create order. So that means that even your sciences to have the acceptability of gaining, of gaining your position where in the field of divine marifa, in the field of divine gnosis, in the field of divine ilm, and this is this very ilm. Which Islam never ever segregates into worldly and religious. And this was the zenith of the intellectualism and spiritualism of Adam. That he is present before angels. And Allah says to angels, just prostrate before Adam. Because I have given him ilm. Ilm of what? Of Juma Khutbahs only. Ilm of what? what? Of Khatma Sharifahs only. Ilm of what? Only Fatwa Bazi. Where from I got all this idea that what I have to speak? By Allah. I never intended to speak even these words. I was just wondering what should I say. But boy out here, he recited this very verse of Holy Quran from Surah Bakara and I got the clue that let me speak on this very verse. And he recited, who was the boy by the way? Thank you. Jazakallah. And he recited one verse. Allah Adamal Asma Akullaha. Allah gave Adam the ilim of Asma. Kullaha of everything. The names of the entire phenomena and nobina of the world were just taught to Adam. And Adam learned. Asma. What does Asma suggest? You say names. Adam was taught the names of the things like Adam, this is a balloon. Adam, this is a flower vase. Adam, these are dry fruits. Asma like this? No. By Asma you mean the names. But when Allah Almighty says the name of a thing, He doesn't only intend to say that this is Kaju and this is Badam. No. Allah wants us to Allah wants Adam to see through these two things, to know the properties of these things. What does balloon mean in reality? Balloon means that when there is a tension in the surface, because of the air you are inserting in it, there will be a something like this. It will create a mechanism. It will have a scientific explanation. Adam alongside the Asma was taught the laws of the things. Adam was taught the attributes of the things. That way Adam was taught science. How? How you can just make a balloon? How? Science. But science only tells you why of the things. Science never tells you, science tells you how of the things. Sorry, science tells you how of the things but science never tells you why of the things do cheeze hain bachcho kaise hua science tells you kyun hua it's the prerogative of the philosophy it's the prerogative of the philosophy and adam was taught science as well as philosophy of the things and in the spiritual realm adam was also taught something in spiritual realm, Adam was taught what is the spiritual relevance of this thing, how a particular thing manifests the divine attributes. For example, let me take this glass. Let me take this glass. If Adam would have been taught this is a glass, it's not only glass, you are taught asma. Asma means whether this glass manifests any divine name or not. Be careful. If this glass manifests any divine attribute or not, divine attributes are always divine. But things in the world manifest attributes of the divine. For example, spring season comes, Bahar Chuyavan. Bahar Asmas Khadayu Sunkusnao. Zindagi. Because spring always brings life. So spring manifests the life attribute of Allah. Manifests. 
It is with Allah, but this thing manifests. What does this glass manifest of the attributes of Allah? For example, we see Allah's one attribute is Muhit. Muhit means which engulfs. Muhit means which surrounds. Doesn't this glass engulf and surround something? If it would not have surrounded water, it would not have been a glass. That means that this glass exists because of its attribute of being muhit. So this glass too would not have existed if it would not have manifested some of the quantity of the divine attributes. Each and everything in the world is there because it manifests some sort of divine attribute positively as well as negatively. What do I mean by What do I mean by positively and negatively? You will see that oh okay, good. Glass manifests it positively. How come? How come? A bad thing, a bad thing. How come, for example, Satan, for example, devil, does he too manifest something? If not, then how come it is existing? Because I said that each and everything exists because of manifesting certain divine attributes. But I said positively as well as negatively like this. I am just placing my hand here. You see shadow of my hand? You see shadow of my hand? Does shadow exist as I'm student? Does shadow exist? Why? Shadow in itself is nothing. Shadow is absence of light. It has no positive value. It exists negatively. That is shadow is nothing but it is the existence of light. How come otherwise you will define shadow? So devilish principle also exists there because it is some, somewhere negating the divine positivity. So that way even positively or negatively it is just directly or indirectly because of the divine attributes that each and everything exists. Each and everything exists. So how you go there? Now does Quran does Islam just bar you anywhere from getting scientific and philosophical insights? No. So when my brothers and sisters, you study your subjects, your sciences, your philosophies, just have a perspective of Holy Quran also in your mind. It will just give a flip and boost to your IQ and your inquisitiveness. You know, our first and foremost wahi was Ikra. Read. So this Ummah has emerged out of the word read. But unfortunately, if you are going through competitive exams, for example, I was told some are opting for OIS, some are opting for KS, then you must be knowing that there was one just such a committee report. Just a such a. He gave a report about Indian Muslims, Dalits, marginalized people and Indian Muslims. He said Indian Muslims are the most backward class socially as well as this by virtue of education. Backward. You see, when you go to New Delhi, when you visit Jama Masjid, you will see Kabutar Khanas. You will see people just uh, making cocks and goats fight with each other. You will see, you will feel fishy smoke each and everywhere in Muslim bastis. And when you go to other bastis, you will just find order. Means Muslims are sitting somewhere in their medieval mentality that we have just to uh, make our children half his Quran. Okay, it's okay. But if you lag behind in your social responsibility, your half his, your half his will have to beg at shops. And your mulvies have to beg at roadsides. So it's also your religious responsibility. It's also your religious duty to excel at each and every sphere of life. In each and every sphere of life. 
so that way by cracking these exams exams etc you are doing your social responsibilities towards ummah so be happy you are not different from the religious lord you too are religious taqdeer e umam kya hai koi keh nahi sakta har fard hai millat ke muqaddar ka sitara and last 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 but not least i will say this thing that when you are getting through these competitive exams one thing comes to our mind that there is a lot of competition yes yes there is a lot of competition but never ever believe in cut throat competitions gala kato competition so kus taleem gayi so kya education go which just teaches you to cut others throat to excel in your life islamic concept of education is not cut throat competition islamic way of education is cooperation you all inmates of this reading room bakhil mo banyu mani vesi gosna ye question pai lagun ani jawab gos me ho pata lagun ani se pawan bo paga ye examas mas this is jealousy and if education teaches you jealousy i'm sorry you are not qualified to be good muslims whatever may be the national educational policy whatever may be the uh, oxford and cambridge standard of education i don't know i am a layman from a village but our education must not settle us down at cutting com- throats for competition rather we must cooperate with each other then may be god forbid somebody is not able to crack his exam then we just acha hat phutan pat hum marne se pehle kitni bar marte hain gatha pass na gatha pass what will i do if i don't qualify these are these threats and these fears they also come down to you when you are just making your paper there when you are attempting it there this fear psychosis even comes there you just say i am doing it just for the sake of allah if allah wills me i will crack if allah doesn't will me okay there will be something else for me so guys like math you your the kun fikri war ila khaufun alayhim wala hum yazmun neither will be there any fear neither will be there any threat if you pass it okay if you don't pass it still you will not feel guilty conscious because at least you have tried your bit so don't waver in the past i have done this this very folly mistake in the past when kya banyam me kya kor whatever happened it happened you don't have any rewind button that you just put out your long arm in the past and correct the things happened happened and don't get stuck in the future you don't have that very long arm that you will do future settings in future whatever it will it will so whatever you have it is this present moment there was a philosopher his name was bergson he says i don't know mazhabi alim kam hai nahi hai nas i don't know but he says past and future doesn't exist only the present exists because when you just woke up in the fajr now this time it is your past but at that moment it was your present when you will reach 7 pm 8 pm in the evening it will all again to your present you only have a trail of present moving just leaving the footprints of present and the footprints of present is past and hope for the present hope for the present moment sitting here and hoping its future but all you have is present just use your present judiciously and leave each and every thing to allah even sheep rearing is not a small bet agar teer ke insaan rach 
क्यों आप लोग इतने मारे मारे वाई डू यू हैव सो मच फैसिनेशन ओनली फॉर गवर्नमेंट जॉब Women, daughters, sisters, go for entrepreneurship. You don't know the first entrepreneur of Islam, Hazrat Khadija Al Kubra, Salam Allahi Alaiha, who just gave loans and karze hasana to Muslims, who helped Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Wa wa and you know, I will tell you one thing more. Tell me, give it up. You know, when Prophet came from Garhira, people say that these Bhamari bachiya. इनको अलग रखो ये कि कहीं दीनी इज्तिमाओ में न दिखे नहीं दिखेंगे तो फिर तुम ही तो शिकवा करते हो मर्द लोगों इनको दीन क्यों नहीं पता है देन यू आर मार्जिनलाइजिंग देम अगेन इवन इन योर रिलीजियस कॉन्ग्रेगेशन यू आर Complaining about their wheel and parda, but you are not yourself doing parda, and you are not even yourself lowering your gaze. So this is said Khadija. When Prophet came back from Hira, he confided his secret in Khadija. Said, "I got something." You know the first and foremost revelation of Islam, but Prophet is first addresses a woman. Prophet's first ever address of divine revelation is woman. He said, "I am afraid of myself. Something will. I will beget something." Do you know what Khadija said? He said, "Kalla wallah la yazi kalla wa bada." Mere sartaj Allah aapko kabi.